Hey, what's going on guys? Matt here from MyRawIntuition.com. Hope you're all doing well today. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about one of the five pillars to creating transformational change that I cover in my brand new book, The 21 Day Raw Transformation Program. I'm really excited to get you guys this book. I think it's gonna really help people out with, one, getting into a healthy and sustainable raw vegan diet, but also how to create transformational change in your life. I mean, I have experienced such a transformation in my life since getting into this diet and lifestyle, and I share with you all the things that I believe were instrumental in helping me to do that. And it's not just diet. There's many factors, and I go over five core pillars to making changes that are significant and transformational in your body, mind, and spirit. And so that is what the book is about. I hope you'll check it out. And at this time, from April 1st to April 11th, it is included in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which is going on right now. You can check it out in the link in the description box down below. And you're gonna get a ton of other raw vegan contributors uh, putting in brand new content, eBooks, courses, uh, meal plans, all these things that can help you to educate yourself and to give you a bunch of awesome recipes in the process to get you started or even just if you've been doing this lifestyle already, just to enhance your current understanding and practice of the lifestyle and diet. All right, so if you want the book, my brand new book, The 21 Day Raw Transformation Program, on its own, you'll have to wait until April 12th when it's on my website. All right, so the core pillar that we're gonna talk about today is lifestyle. All right, so a lot of people just change their diet and they just focus on the diet, expecting that to you know, be everything that they need to do in order to create this transformational change that they're wanting. And while diet will create a lot of amazing changes in your life, you still need to incorporate a holistic approach and use other aspects of health to create a long lasting sustainable change that's going to really uh, you know, impact you at the deepest levels, all right? And so lifestyle you know, is a broad topic that we could really cover a ton of different issues that people could change and, and you know, work on to create change, but the first thing that I encourage people to focus on are what I call the big three, all right? So sleep, stress, and exercise are the big three lifestyle factors that I believe are kind of the foundation of lifestyle changes that people should start with. You know, anybody, uh, regardless of their, their budget, can get better sleep, can do a little exercise, and can work on their stress management, right? So these are things that anybody can just start off with, and you don't have to buy a bunch of equipment or anything like that. Um, so it's easy, it's affordable, and it is effective. And the other thing I really love is that they synergistically work to improve a person's immune function, energy levels, and the amount of joy that they experience in their life. So when you enhance all of these aspects of your life, you're going to be much more likely to sustain these changes over the long term because you're gonna feel so much better, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna have a clearer mind, and everything is just gonna work better. All right, so let's briefly talk about these three factors. Now, sleep, we'll start off with because sleep seems to be you know, the most neglected and underappreciated factor when it comes to our health uh, that there is, right? So everybody thinks they can just work themselves late into the night, you know, get a few hours of sleep, and then pop right back up early in the morning and get back to work. You know, that is just kind of the culture that we have, you know, been uh, brought up in. And, you know, people do not take sleep serious enough. And so that is why it is one of the foundational, you know, big three uh, lifestyle factors. And, and I want you to think about it like this. Now, imagine there are two lumberjacks out in the forest and they're going to have a competition to see who can chop the most wood in the same amount of time. 
So they start off and you know, 30 minutes goes by, they're both chopping away and they're at a pretty even pace, right? Now, lumberjack number one, he decides he's gonna stop and sharpen his ax. Lumberjack number two, he's just gonna keep going, he's not gonna stop, he wants to work as long as he can and chop as much wood without stopping. Now to the audience, they're thinking, wow, Lumberjack number two is way ahead. He's, you know, the first guy is sitting there not chopping any wood. He's just sharpening his ax. The other guy is getting out way ahead. So they think number two is going to win this competition. Now when Lumberjack number one gets back to chopping wood, his ax is so much sharper. And so he can chop through so much more wood than Lumberjack number two, who throughout this competition, his ax has become so dull that it's taking him way more energy to get the same amount of production than Lumberjack number one, who took the time to sharpen his ax and keep it you know, in a good condition that allows him to make a lot more production with less effort. All right, and so in the end, of course, Lumberjack number one comes out in the lead and he wins because he took the time to take care of his ax and sharpen it and you know keep it in a good condition. So that's just the little story that I use to show the importance of sleep and keeping your mind sharp and healthy by getting adequate sleep and giving it the rest that it needs to cleanse and heal and recharge so that we can maintain a high level of production in as efficient of a manner as possible. All right, so the second factor, exercise. You know, anybody can do some exercise. They don't have to go to a gym. They don't really have to buy any sort of equipment if they don't want to. Uh, you can really just do body weight exercises or walking um, or gardening or any other sort of physical activity that raises your heart rate and gets your blood and lymph moving and gets your endorphins going and just, you know, enhances the cardiovascular health of your body so that you're getting as much oxygen and nutrients to all your tissues and cells uh, and so that they can work at their highest level. And when we exercise, we increase the body's capacity for mitochondrial biogenesis, which means the creation of more mitochondria. Now this is important because mitochondria are those little energy producing organelles that are in our cells that help our body to produce energy. And so when we exercise more, the body becomes more efficient at producing energy for us to use as it creates more mitochondria. And so exercising improves the health of our mitochondria and it increases their numbers. So if you want more energy, you want to improve your mitochondrial health. And you do that by exercise and an anti-inflammatory diet because mitochondria are especially susceptible to oxidative stress. And so to keep them healthy, we wanna be getting in as many colors in our diet and as many antioxidants and stay hydrated and all these things to keep our mitochondria healthy and to keep our energy levels high. All right, now the last but not least of the big three is stress. Now, everybody is dealing with stress these days. You know, it's hard not to. And so it just comes down to how we handle stress and how we deal with it and how we release some of that stress to keep our body and mind in a healthy condition, right? So there are different kinds of stress. There is eustress, which is good stress, which comes from things like exercise and, you know, going on a date or, you know, giving a presentation or, you know, things like that that give you a little bit of stress, but they, they add some value to your life and they actually have a net benefit to them. Um, they actually create what is called hormesis, which is a little bit of stress that creates a good benefit. And so that is the type of stress that ideally we would like to have the majority of the stress we experience be eustress. Now there's also distress, which is something that we, you know, it, it is a, a stress that comes from a threat or something that we feel could harm us. Um, now it, it may or may not be an actual threat of harm. It could just be something we perceive 
as as something that could harm us, such as giving a speech. You know, a lot of people are very stressed out by giving a speech, and they don't actually get any benefit from it because it, it actually gives them more of a panic attack than anything else. So it really depends a lot on our perception of the stress because somebody might get you stress from giving a presentation or a speech, and another person could have distress from giving that same presentation or speech. So it, it really comes down to the perception that we have in our mind of, of what that stressor is um, you know, presenting to us, and, and that is a big key. So one of the things that I talk about in the book is about how we perceive stress and how we perceive ourselves in the situation in determining how the outcome will play out, right? So using that same example of the presentation where one person gets you stress and the other person gets distress, let's look at how the lens of the perception from each person determines which type of stress that is. So a person with an optimistic lens that they are viewing their environment from is going to see this as an opportunity for growth and development and the betterment of themselves and their communication skills and that sort of a thing. The person that gets distress from the situation is viewing it through a pessimistic lens, more of a victim mentality where they're seeing it as like a punishment from God or the universe uh, you know, for putting them in this situation where they have to give this uh, presentation and instead of getting a hormetic benefit, they get uh, more trauma than anything else. So that has a lot to do with how we internalize the stress that we experience. And that is why it's so important that we find a way to shift the lens that we see life through to be more of an optimistic lens, uh, more of a, uh, a lens that puts us into the position as a creator of our environment and our, of our reality. And so rather than being a victim where things happen to you, we take a position of the creator and we have much more ability to find solutions to the things that give us stress, right? And so that is what I would encourage people to try to do. And additionally, we also have to know how to release stress rather than holding it in and letting it fester within us and create issues that we don't want to happen. And so releasing stress is also a very important key to stress management and how we can use the stress more as you stress to give us a net benefit rather than holding on to it and causing distress within the body. So some ways that we can release stress are exercise, journaling, taking a bath, or doing something you enjoy, you know, go for a walk in nature. There are many things that we can do to release stress and so that we're not holding it in our body and letting it cause issues. So it is so important to take care of these big three factors in our lifestyle to help us to increase the chances of maintaining and sustaining a healthy life long term. All right, so I hope this was helpful, you guys. I hope you got something from this. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments box down below. And again, if you're interested in getting my new book, The 21 Day Raw Transformation Program, you can get it right now through April 11th in the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, along with many other raw food chefs and educators out there that are putting out new content for you in this bundle. You're gonna get tons of recipes, tons of education, and you know it'll be definitely worth checking out. And if you wanna get my book on its own, after that it would be April 12th and after it'll be available in my shop. So have a great day guys, and I will catch you in the next video. Always follow your raw intuition.